Good morning, Terrosphere. It's Holly from Cape Cod Creatures here with my trusty, rusty, ginormous coffee. Mm, so good. Um, and I'm here this morning to do a live review of <clears throat> the Crow Tarot. Um, this was an indie deck that was, well, indie, like, I'm not going to say indie because it wasn't supposed to be indie. Um, so this was a deck advertised on Indiegogo. Um, it's a little back here with my oh my goodness i keep forgetting to mute myself there we go so yeah i keep forgetting um good morning bella how are you all right so now that i'm muted um because <clears throat> i like to pop out my chat in a different window but you have to i have to mute it because apparently there's a different way to do it but i'm a bit of a luddite anyway um this was a deck advertised on indiegogo um, you know, a, a crowdfunded deck by the time I had gotten to it, which on, like, I think it was like two or three days, maybe a little bit after it had been up originally. Um, by the time I got there, it was, hi, Amethyst. How are you? Good morning to you. Um, by the time I had gotten there, uh, the deck had already, it was already known that the deck was going to be printed with us games. So as backers, we were going to receive um, advanced copies of the deck that were going to be signed by the artist. Uh, there was also a tier for a journal, which I did back for. Um, and then she added a bunch of stuff on throughout the campaign. So I think by the time that the uh, by the time that the campaign was over, my reward tier was supposed to include um, a reading from the a reading from the artist, which I did receive a journal an indie printed journal, which I did receive. That's actually right here. Um, a US, a mass produced, uh, US games produced copy of the deck that was signed by the artist. And we were supposed to re receive those like a month or two in advance of everyone else. Um, and then we we're supposed to get a postcard every month from, um, from the artist. Uh, for as a, like a thanks, like a, with the artwork and whatnot, just like a, here's a postcard thing. Um, so the thing concludes, um, and we start receiving postcards. I think I, they, I want to say it ended in January. Um, and I got the deck like last month. Was it last month? I don't remember anymore, but, um, I have, I've, yeah, I've probably had the deck for about a month, a few weeks, a month. I received like maybe three, four postcards in the mail. Um, there's supposed to be like six or seven of them. But, I, you know, postcards, I'm not really that worried about. Like, that's not a big thing. Um, had that been the only hiccup in the campaign, that would have been, I wouldn't even be worth mentioning. I'd just be happy that I got some postcards. Um, mostly because I'm really horrible at putting stuff in the mail, so I get it. Um, all right. So, anyway, um, back to my story about, uh, da -da -da, I have the update up, actually. Oh, my goodness. Did it just refresh? But anyway, a couple months ago, we received an update. Fuck. Okay, so I had the update up, and then it was just like, nope, guess what? But at some point, we received an update that said, hey, guess what? This is super exciting. Um, turns out that I am not going to be um, going through US Games to print the deck because some sort of thing in our contract had it so that US Games allowed her to do um, her own printing of it until the deck was officially released by US Games. Good morning, Brenda, how are you? So she said, don't worry, I'm going through a really reputable printer. You're gonna receive the exact same quality as you would have received through US Games only to be an indie deck. Um, you'll receive it earlier. Also, it'll be really good quality. Also, there'll be a special card in there just for backers. So. Um, in like a, like a special card in the deck and it'll be like a little, it'll be the, the, the Indiegogo edition. So, all right. I was skeptical, but something was, something was like kind of nudging at me. Um, so I had decided that I was going to reach out on Instagram to the, um, to one of the U S games editors. You still haven't, Brenda, you should email her. Um, she said that all the copies should be, did you pre-order it late or did you take part in the um, Indiegogo? Um, so I reached out, I'm pulling up my Insta. Um, I reached out on Instagram to, do, 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 where is she? Colorful Lynn. 
Um, if you don't follow her, you should. She's an editor for US Game. So you get sneak peeks of all the decks that are up and coming. Um, and I said, hey, totally weird. Here's the, hey, totally weird question. But do you, oh, this was back in May. So May is when this all went down. I said, hello, totally weird question. But do you know how the Crow Tarot will be packaged for its US Games release? And she said, not weird at all. I think the cards will be nice and big and presented in a deck book set with a two-piece box rather than a tuck box. So I've pulled a couple of uh, US Games decks for you um, that I don't remember if I've reviewed these or not. I don't have my copy of Eight Coins. It's actually at work today. Yeah, you need to, you need to email her because Indiegogo backers received their decks a long time ago, Brenda. So... You, you definitely need to you need to let her know you didn't get it. Um, so this is Spirit Song, which um, Paulina Cassidy, um, she's done a couple of different oracles, but this is the book that comes with the Spirit Song tarot deck. These are the cards. They're nice and big, um, especially when you compare with a traditional tarot card, like here's Mass Market Wild Unknown. They're a smidge bigger. Not so big you can't shuffle them, but you know, it shows off that extra quarter inch, shows off the artwork really well. Um, you know, really nice decorated box. Um, finished on the inside with a nice pink color. And I'm not here to review this, but like here's the here's the the complete, like the little white book is actually really nice and thick and detailed. And the nice two-piece box. And then you have um, the Japaridzi, which if you don't have, you should totally get it. It's a beautiful deck. Um, and I always wait for the, I always wait to look for the price to come down. But again, nice large cards. This isn't a two-piece box, but it is bigger. It's got a nice large thick book and a nice, like everything's all tucked away really well in here. Um, it's just a really nice printing. Um, the cardstock is beautiful. Same thing on the Spirit Song Tarot. It's got more of a matte feel, but the cardstock is beautiful. Um, so yeah, that's that is what a US Games mass produced deck looks like. Um, I really, I really like them for mass producing. I like Harper Collins as well. Uh, da, 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 who else do we like? Schiffer is actually improving their cardstock. So I know everybody's freaking out right now about the Circo Tarot going mass produced with Schiffer potentially, but don't you guys worry. Um, I received one of their decks recently um, and they've redone Marielle. So uh, if you ordered, uh, you haven't received yours either. You ordered more than one Indiegogo states that she received on. So she received, that was the, that was the second printing. So you guys, the Indiegogo update states she received yeah, so she received more decks on September 4th, which is for a second printing. I don't know, maybe it was, maybe she didn't have enough decks to, but everybody that ordered through Indiegogo should have received a deck, like by now. Um, so I don't know if that was for a second run of pre-orders or what, but you really need to check in. You really, really, really need to check in with her. Um, anyway, so Crow Tarot. Um, she sends us this update. And then another update state she's going through. Um, yeah, you sh you should email her. Um, another update the the another update was like, hey you guys, figured out who I'm going through. Um, I'm going through Print Ninja, and it's going to be in a tuck box. So right away, alarm bells for me start going off, and I'm just like, well, that's not what that is not what U.S. Games has stated we would be receiving. Um, and I've gotten Print Ninja decks before. They're a decent printing house. Um, but they are a middleman. They have relationships. Uh, email through Indiegogo and email her directly, yes. Um, so alarm bells start going off with me, and I'm just like, well, okay, so Print Ninja, they're, they're a publishing house for indie creators, and I'm not saying stay away from them because, honestly, they make it easier. Rather than having to go over, like, um, shop out printers overseas for yourself, they're a middleman. They have direct relationships with all of these publisher, with all of these, like, printers, um, and, and both in the States and overseas, so that way, like, they can kind of walk you through it, which, if I was printing, like, that would be one of the routes that I would go, um, 
But anyway, she states that it's coming in a tuck box now. Uh, and the tuck box is nice, but honestly, it, <laughs> it almost feels like game crafter quality, which to me is really upsetting. Um, <clears throat> so we get the deck comes in the tuck box. I sent her a question about that, by the way. I was like, I just talked to, you know, I just talked to the, one of the editors from, from us games. And she said, we're getting a two piece box. And you said, um, Oh, you're outside with your service dog. Aww. Well, don't, don't disturb him while he's working, but later when he's off duty, give him a squeeze. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, she said we were getting uh, same quality as U.S. Games. So I emailed her and I was like, hey, listen, this is what U.S. Games said. Probably coming in a two-part box with a really nice book. And you're sending us a deck in a tuck box. And no word on what kind of a little white book we're getting. And she never replied to that. So <clears throat> amazing. The decks come. They come in the two-part box like she had said. This is the this is the deck. I mean, the, the cardstock is okay. It's a little thin and flimsy. It shuffles really well. Uh, the borders are a little bit large. I leaf through the entire deck because I'm like, well, at least we're getting a special card just for us, right? Like a, and by the way, special card to me means a twenty, like a number twenty two in the Arcana, which means twenty three cards in the Major Arcana, like a, like the um, star, like the Star Child deck had. Star Child, or was it Star Seed? It's got that special card. There are a few other special cards, like a Happy Squirrel, almost. So, <clears throat> yeah, ignoring was really stupid. They are small. Let's compare them to, compare to like the Japaritzi. And then compared to the Spirit Song. I mean, they're standard tarot size. You know, they're they're not like a they're not tiny, they're standard, they're a standard tarot size card, but compared to um, you know, your normal US games, this is the so they are a bit smaller. And her artwork is super busy. So it's it's it would have behooved her to just go like I would have rather have waited for the US games printing. Um, but anyway, so I was like, okay, well at least we're getting at least we're getting a special card. So I leaf through the entire deck. I'm really excited because that that would make, as far as a collector is concerned, that would make this definitely worth like it would make it worth it. Like if you order the White Sage Tarot and you got the White Sage card, um, yay! But I leaf through it, and this is the special card. This is the special card. It is a thank you card. And I'm trying not to be frustrated about it, but. I sent her a message on, I sent her a message on her Facebook and I was like, oh, hey, so I remember here's the update and here's a screenshot of your update that said that we would be getting a special card in the deck that would be exclusive just to this um, thing. And, you know, is it supposed to be the thank you card? Like, could you read, like, or did you forget to do the special card or whatnot? Did it just not happen that way? Like, there was no update to let us know. And she never replied to that. And she replied to other comments on the same post well after I posted my comments. So it's not like she's, she just is choosing to ignore my inquiry. And I was polite about it. I wasn't like, bitch, where's my card? Um, so that was really frustrating. And then the last really final piece of super frustratingness is if you didn't back the journal. So here's the journal. The journal is actually decent. It's an indie published journal. Um, it's in color. It gives you the meaning of the card and then it gives you, um, you know, an area to write about the card. What I don't like is there's like keywords and dates rather than, I don't know, like it just seems I, like it's good, but I think she should have just left that blank as like just a space for reflection rather than being like, come up with some keywords because she's supposed to have the keywords. Something just fell out of the journal. Hang on. What's this? Oh, it's a postcard. Okay. So anyway, the journal is decent. It's not like amazing. I'm not like, oh my God, that's the best journal I've ever received for tarot. Holy cannoli. Um, but it's, it's good. I, I'm glad I got it. Because it's going to serve as an extended as an extended guidebook. Because here's the guidebook that came with the deck. 
This is the little white book, y'all. This is like way back. Way, way back. <laughs> way back in the day to little white books. Little white books. Like, I don't know if you guys remember getting tarot decks way back in the day, but they would come with like this stupid little pamphlet. Los Carabeo is you is pretty much this is like a low scare. This is like a low scarabeo pamphlet. Um, how many pages is this thing? It's 24 pages here. And for, for reference, um, I, I, I really suspect that the Crow Tarot will come something a little bit like tarot song, um, spirit song tarot. So for comparison, spirit song, indie printed. I'm like, I can't even, I can't, I'm so frustrated. So the whole reason that I backed this deck, the whole reason that I even backed this deck to begin with. So right away, I can tell you what she did. Like mid campaign to change your mind. Fine. I have been a part of so many different kickstarting and Indiegogos and whatnot and whatnot that it's just like creators change your mind all the time throughout the campaign. That's part of the beauty of crowdfunding is the product kind of evolves and you get to watch it evolve. That being said, during the campaign, you have the choice as to whether or not you want to pull your pledge because of how the product has changed. So she decided well after the campaign was over, I think the campaign was over in January, and she decided in May she was going to go with this indie printing. Um, so at that point, we had no way to get our money back. We just had to like stick with it and ride it. And I had specifically backed it because I have just had the worst luck with indie creators lately. I love supporting artists. I really do. Um, I live in a really um, tight knit community. Uh, Cape Cod is really small. It's really, really slow in the winter. We have a huge focus on driving local economy. Um, and local businesses because we've got like this huge focus on placemaking and uniqueness. Like every, like, you know, there's not a whole, like we've got some major box stores, but they're contained in one little area. And like a lot of it is all like family owned businesses. There's a handful of franchises, but like our Ben and Jerry's franchise, for example, has been owned by the same guy in the same family for 30 years that are very active in the community. So like, that's the kind of place that, that we have here. So, Love supporting indie people. Love it. I believe in it wholeheartedly. But lately, it's just been such a hard time supporting indie creators. Like, the decks are coming crappy. The attitudes are really shitty. Um, you know, they don't, re the customer service is really horrible. I'm finding, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'm finding more and more that these artists are very talented when it comes to creating cards and artwork and whatnot, but they're not business people and they have no idea how to run a business um, and do it like up to the expectations of a consumer in 2018. So anyway, um, I backed this deck specifically because one, I don't have a mass market deck that's been autographed by, um, that's, that's kind of on my, like my bucket list. I don't have a mass market printed deck that's been autographed by an artist. Like to me, that's like going to a book signing only I wouldn't have had to have gone anywhere. It would have just come to me already signed. Um, so that would have been awesome just for my collection. And two, it would have been a professionally produced and edited deck. And I wouldn't have had the frustrations that I'm having right now. Like, <laughs> been like I would have cut out the middleman and like to have it a couple of months ahead of time would have been amazing for like review purposes. I would have loved to have been a part of that stir. But here it is, and here I am being like, I'm not excited about it. And I love crows, you guys. I've talked about him several times. Cookies the Crow is awesome. Um, he's he's my he's one of my Reiki guides, uh, spirit guides, animal guides, however you wanna like I I just like I I started with him when I started taking Reiki classes. Um, so anyway, but like I love crows. Crows are awesome, big fan very intelligent birds. But anyway, this is the deck itself. So let's, let's stop focusing on the negative and let's focus on the positives of this deck. Um, 
Yeah, the Naked Heart Tarot. So I love Jillian and I actually have a review to do for Jillian because I have her second edition now. So I've got both editions of the Naked Heart, but that's going to require like the overhead camera setup so I can compare the two side by side. Um, so I will do that at some point and I promised her that I would and I need to get on it. Um, but anyway, this is the deck. I find that the borders are overly large on the top and the bottom, but I don't think it takes away from the deck itself. Her artwork is very dreamy, but also very busy. So if you're a person that likes to kind of um, do a Where's Waldo as far as imagery in the deck is concerned, you'll definitely be able to, um, you know, work some stuff out in there. I'm trying to get it to focus for you. But I don't think it matters because the deck's not really even focused, if that makes any sense. It's like a very dreamy collage, not collage. Like it's kind of a weird... Um, the borders are all different colors too, which I actually really enjoy. But it's traditional Rider weight imagery with a bit of a twist. This is one of my favorite cards on here, um, where the crow is balancing on the sword's edge. Um, so yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, she gifted me the second one, too, as well, Bella. Um, she's just the sweetest creator. Like, she, oh, so, um, um, so we're talking again about Jillian. Um, she's just, like, the best, she's the sweetest, most professional creator I've run across in indie deck printing in a long time. Um, she's, she's up there in my books. So, and... Also, the, the one thing that really kind of bothers me a little bit, but I guess it adds to the quirkiness of the deck, is the borders are a tad inconsistent. But maybe that's just the major arcana gets the gets that treatment, gets the um the big title treatment. But yeah, the, the cards are beautiful. The printing is clear. Um, the cardstock is a little flimsier than and slipperier than I would have liked. I so I like Slippy Cardstock because it allows me to rifle shuffle. Um, and this deck easily fits in the hand because it's it's a thin cardstock. It feels very waxy and slippy. Um, rifle shuffle is really nice. Here's the thing. I have accidentally, like, these cards all over the place a few times because of how slippy they are. So I would say... Um, Maybe it is the majors in the courts. Well, I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find a court card. No, here's the king of wands. So they get like a they get a bit of a different border treatment, but it's so it's so like it's just so quirky that it's kind of like you don't even really notice how different the borders are for each of the cards. It's just. Like it is, oh yeah, so it is It is the major arcana that gets that different border at the top. But again, the cards are just so quirky and like the way they're done. So it's not like, it's not like, um, like the unicorn, the crystal unicorn tarot. Um, there was a debacle with a missing pentacle and then she sent us a new card and then the border was different and then it was like that one. So it doesn't like stick out and you're not like, oh my God, that drives me crazy. Um, it's, it doesn't leave you with that same mental itch, I guess, because the cards are just so busy and quirky to begin with, um, that you don't even really notice. So anyway, it shuffles well. Um, if anybody has any questions, I'll read for you with it. If anybody wants me to do anything like that. Mm. Um, yeah, so the borders are small on the sides, which is really nice. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it um, go as close to borderless as possible in the, they're also really bendy. That's the other thing that really worked. Like, I don't know that I would use this, at least not this version with a, um, like for an in public reading, um, you know, where like you have the people shuffle their own cards. I feel like these could be easily bent or damaged if you're not really, really not, if you're not like at least moderately careful. Oh, this is another good one, too. This is the Four of Swords. So, um, um, the box, yep. So here is the, again, here is the tuck box. 
It is just a very basic tuck box. It's somewhere between, do I have a low Scarabeo tuck box? Oh, you know what? I do. Um, so this one is ripped because it rode around in my purse for a while and I'm just really shitty to my tuck boxes, but it's not as sturdy as a low Scarabeo tuck box. The, the card stock is definitely thinner and it doesn't fit the cards in the book as well. Like these are all really nice and snug in here. This is again, low Scarabeo. This is um, Tarot of the Magical Forest, by the way. And then when you get all the stuff packed away in this box, let me just get you in there, do to do. do. Um, the other thing that I really like about the low Scarabeo tuck boxes is it doesn't have that flappy on the bottom. These are just, very it's got a lot of room on the sides and the box is like really loose um it, so it feels closer to a game crafter box than it does to a um like a low scarabeo tuck box it's just not a very high like it's not an amazing quality tuck box which nothing wrong like it is a tuck box is what it is but yeah so the low scarabeo tuck boxes this is so stupid like it'd be like <laughs> I can't believe that this is a thing that gets talked about, but it's so important. The low Scarabeo tuck boxes don't have the tuck in flappy on the bottom. Like they don't have like this for the bottom of the box. It's just so you don't get the card stuck on it, which is really stupid, but it's kind of an important feature. Whoever thought of that genius, we love you. Um, oh, you ordered it in July. Yeah. That's why you haven't received your deck yet then because um, if you weren't a part of the original and you got like the whole, like the crowdfunding, whatever, like it became an in-demand campaign. So maybe that's a thing. Maybe that is a thing to explain too. So people who are waiting for the deck that ordered through Indiegogo, Indiegogo has two stages of campaign. They have the original crowdfunding, which is like your do it in 30 days or it doesn't happen at all. But with Indiegogo, you also have the choice to like still get your money, which is why some creators decide to go Indiegogo. For Kickstarter is all or nothing. Indiegogo is, is well, you almost made it. So sure. Um, you have the choice to do all or nothing or just as, as funded. Um, so Indiegogo has the two stages. They've got the initial crowdfunding campaign. And then if your campaign like kind of if your campaign funds and then also like goes above and beyond expectation for excitement, you get what's called in-demand funding. So in-demand means people can use their platform to place pre-orders and your campaign kind of goes further than you expected. Like it's already done, it's like the original campaign is over. I think you need to offer different in-demand tiers than your original, like you can choose whether or not you're going to do the original crowdfunding or you can do a different in-demand tier um, and you can tweak your prices as far as that's concerned. But it's basically, it becomes a pre-order platform, almost like a backer kit or um, a store envy or something like that. But you're going through Indiegogo um, because you've already created the excitement and the uh, internet, like the SEO and the whatever, like the, 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 traffic. So when you Google Crotero, Indiegogo is the first thing that comes up and then her website comes up second. So, I mean, you know, it's, you've already created that internet traffic and that internet stir. So it gives people who are looking for you a place to order without getting frustrated because they can't find your, your actual like online store, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah. So Indiegogo, it's, um, it's an interesting platform. I, I like it. I well, I have I have some love hate with it. Um, it's a little difficult to search because you can't just do live campaign and demand. Like you can't you can't search by um, you can do in demand campaign or you can just do all campaigns. You can't just search live. Um, you know projects that are live like you can on Kickstarter. Um, and it's just not like it's just not as well known as Kickstarter, I guess. So it doesn't get as much as much bluster um as kickstarter does so if i was if i was a creator i would first try kickstarter it's all or nothing worst case scenario you get nothing and then i would move to indiegogo but that's just me all right so you know you didn't know about the two stages veronica jude um i did a, you back your first deck um what what deck did you back 
and you love backing decks, I need you to, I need you to, I need you to, um, I need you to expand on that for me. What do you love about backing decks? So I love the excitement and the, and like the sense of community that's built when you back a deck. Like I, I super love that. Um, I also back board games. Oh, you use contact paper. Okay, so you're talking about like literally like using contact paper to back your deck. Okay. All right. I got you. Mm, I got you. Picking up what you're putting down now. All right. So anyway, if anybody has any questions, this deck shuffles like a dream. We're going to read with it. Um, good morning, Leslie. How are you? Although I don't think you're. No, nope, yep, you're on. Okay, sorry. But yeah, um, <clears throat> yes, so we're reading with the Crow Tarot. It actually reads really well, if that makes any sense. I mean, like, I'm not, so had she just from the get-go been like, hey, this is a Crow Tarot, um, it's going to go indie printing, and yeah, and like, had never been like, PS, US Games picked it up, like, and she had she just been like, US Games picked it up, but you're getting the independent release deck here. Um, in the first place, all of this could have been avoided. Like, I get that it kind of evolved over time. She's got another deck out, too, right now, you guys, called the Dog Tarot, or the Wisdom of the Dog Tarot. It's That's on Indiegogo. So if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to back another one of her decks, very, very much the same art style, I would say a little bit cleaner than the Crow. Um, you can back that. It's on Indiegogo. It's got 15 days left on the campaign. If you wanted to back that, you could. Um, I still don't know if I'm going to back it. Like, I love dogs. I really, really do. But, <clears throat> oh, my God, coffee really is the best thing on the face of the planet. It's my drug of choice. That and chicken nuggets. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> so we're going to do some readings. If anybody has any questions, you let me know. We'll do some polls with the Crow Tarot. It's been a while since I've done Tarot Tarot. Well, no, I did. I did. Um, I did Wild Unknown the other day, but um, I've been reading a lot with Oracle decks lately, and I don't know why. I just kind of been feeling the Oracle vibe lately. Um, sure, a general reading for Bella. All right. Do 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 do. In the beginning, you asked her about the U.S. Games printing, and she stated the campaign was not for the deck but the journal. Yeah, so the whole point of her campaign in the first place was to be like, okay, well, you're going to get a deck, but hey, if you want this journal, like it was a way to get the journal out there for her to raise money in addition to her contract with the U.S. Games like as a creator. And then it just turned into this weird, I think she's just, she's very flighty. She's clearly not anchored. Um, you know, she's not. A, she's just not a grounded person. She's a creator, and that's fine. As a creator, you have every right to be as airy and flighty and indecisiony as you want. That's part of what helps you create amazing art. But you can't run a campaign that way. Like you can't. You can't. You can't run an Indiegogo that way because customers have certain expectations. And yeah, Beaker is being adorable. He's barking. Burp, 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 burp. All right, so got Ace of Wands, the Four of Wands, and the Five of Pentacles. Oh, let's see. <laughs> All right, so here's the Ace of Wands. And then you got the Four of Wands. And here is the Five of Pentacles. Sue. So,
this reads to me like you had like some amazing idea, um, like some sort of amazing idea for um, either not so much a business idea, but like some sort of like creative project uh, probably to do with your home and you just don't have the money to do it. Um, you know, like, oh man, I want to like redecorate or I finally have an idea what I want to do with such and such, or, you know, it would be amazing, a brand new comforter and bedspread because like this bullshit that I've got going on right now is just like, I don't like it. <laughs> so, but it feels like maybe you don't have the funds or the means or right now to really kind of do what you wanted to do. Um, I don't know, just, it feels like, like there's some sort of like homemaking that you wanted to do and you just really can't right now. Um, because of, yeah, like, because there's funds, um, in your particular situation, you've got that illness going on, which is very indicative of the five, you've got that other situation. So, which is very five of pentacles -y. Um, and you just like, I don't know, just, you kind of feel like, oh man, like I'm just kind of stuck out in the cold and I just like, I really, really, really wanted to do this and I just can't do it. And it's really driving you crazy. Um, I'm going to pull a solution card for you though, how to move past this. Yeah, it just feels like there's some sort of project that you wanted to do around the house, like, really, really badly, and you just can't right now. Like, you just, there's something that you wanted to do. And you pulled the Nine of Pentacles. So, <laughs> I think... So the nine of pentacles is all about a, like a woman who like, you know, I hate to say it because some people find the term very, um, very offensive, but manifest destiny, um, which I don't know, for whatever reason, like that always stuck me like that's, well, that's, I've been using the term manifest destiny facetiously since I learned it in like the sixth grade, but, um, <laughs> like, for whatever reason, it always tickled my fancy. And I was just like, that just, that's just doing bullshit because you can like, like and being like, I can't get in trouble because manifest destiny. Um, this, this card says really to me for you that the universe just kind of provides. Um, and I don't think it's so much about, I don't think it is so much about manifesting as it is. Um, like you'll figure out a way to make it happen. If that makes sense. Like either the, the money will come in or, like even try posting about it and being like, well, this is what I want to do. Um, or you'll have another idea about how to obtain the material that you need to get this project done. Um, whether you source it from recycled or upcycled material, whether you find a really good coupon for Joanne fabrics or, um, you know, just, it just says to me that, well, no, like bide your time a little bit and, whatever. And like, you'll figure it out. Like, you know, that this is just a very happy, sunny, like positive card. And you do kind of see it's moving. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but the thing that I like about this deck is the color kind of serves as a little bit of a map. So you've got um, the initial idea. This is all moving from a lavender purple to a blue palette. And then this starts to lighten up again a little bit in the borders. Um, that's why I like different color borders. You can kind of read the direction that the color is going in as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it just, you know, like you said, you're selling a bunch of decks soon, but it's just kind of like, well, you know, you'll figure it out. It's just, this is just somebody who's just very large and in charge of their destiny and they have the means to make sure like what they want to get done gets done. So I, I I mean, it just, it seems to me like you're going to figure out the solution. It's not a big deal. Um, feel a little stuck right now, but it's really like you'll get unstuck. Um, oh no, your phone freaked out. Ugh, I hate phones. Phones are the worst. All right. Oh, you're back with coffee. Yay. Gotta love coffee. Um, let's see. Yeah, the images of the deck are very nice. I mean, honestly, if I had spent, so quick reading, it turns out either I like reading in person, um, but I like sitting with cards a little bit more and just kind of like writing out and kind of like thinking and mulling over and picking out the symbolism in each card. There's a lot to pick through in these cards. Um, 
you know, I could probably hone in a little bit more and be like, oh, well, here's what's going on and whatnot. Oh my God, Beaker's saying, hi, Beaker. He's so cute. Um, so like in this card, for example, uh, had I paid a little bit more attention rather than quick glances, you see the cards looking, the, the, the crow is kind of looking towards the city. So maybe like this homemaking idea thing, like, you know, where you like, what did you want to move? Did you want to get a new apartment in the city? Um, <clears throat> you know, there's movement, there's like looking towards, but there's also movement away from the city. So a change of like, a change of like scenery, as far as, you know, going from urban to rural probably could have been picked up in there. Um, there's some stuff going on in the fountain. I don't know. There's just a lot of stuff going on in these cards and just sitting with them. Like it's going to, it's, it's an amazing deck and it reads really, really well. Um, Crystal Mama. Yeah. I would love to read for you. Uh, you just want a general reading as well. Um, yeah. Crowdfunding decks are really, there are struggles. I, Amethyst, that's like really the best way to put it. There are struggles with them. And at this point, like I hate to say it, but indie decks, I'm just gonna pretty much expect that something is going to go wrong with them every time. <laughs> yeah, fencing a deck wouldn't be very fun. Um, so we're gonna do a general reading for Crystal Mama. And then did any did I miss anybody in the chat? Did I miss anybody needed a, wanted a reading? Aside from Bella, I don't think I did. I'm just checking right now. Uh, general reading, Crystal Mama. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So I think we're good. All right. Do do do. And one for Leslie. Da, 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 da. All right, so we've got one for Crystal. I'm sorry, I got a little distracted. All right, and then after Leslie, we are calling it a day because <clears throat> I've got to really got to get ready to go to work now. All right, Sue, so, Crystal Mama. You got the nine of cups. And you got the seven of cups. Wow, you know what? I was just thinking that this nine of cups really looks like the seven. Like I was looking at it and I was like, wow, this nine of cups looks like, you know, it ties in with the seven of cups because it's like that decision making paid off in the end. Um, you know, like they made the right decision and now their cups are full of good stuff to eat as opposed to like snakes and skulls and shit. Um, and then you also got the ace of pentacles. So that's really neat how those two cards showed up together. But in this order, so you've got the, the, again, the nine of cups and the seven of cups. Um, but the nine of cups showed up first followed by the seven. So, um, this would say to me, um, not necessarily all that glitters is not gold, but like, This is it, like things might seem abundant now, but like maybe buckle in because like whether it's a, whether it's a finance, like a, like a decisive misstep or whatnot, it's like you're going to come to a bit of a crossroads where abundance in your life is concerned. Um, you know, things seem like they're going all right right now. Everything's happy. Everything's full. Everything's amazing. Like you've got all this amazing stuff to eat. I mean, not, not, not saying that like you've got a bajillion dollars in the bank and, you know, a monocle and a top hat, but you know, you've got enough to eat. You've got like the, uh, like, you know, your bills are pretty much covered. You're comfortable. Um, you know, you're not, you're not going to bed too, too worried at night, but something's going to come up that is going to challenge that for you a little bit. Um, and this tells me that it is probably going to have something to do, um, with some, not so much anything emotional, but a little more, a little more grounded, like financial, um, and I hate using cards predictively, but that's kind of what I'm getting. Um, and it's just kind of maybe do a budget, maybe look at things a little more practically. 
Um, but if you make the right decision, you'll, you'll be all right. If that makes any sense. So not like maybe like a, maybe you used more electricity this month than you thought you did, or maybe there's an unexpected bill or um, that kind of stuff. Usually when I pull this, I pulled this card right before. Um, so my husband, for those that don't know, my husband's legally blind. And for a while when he was living in Boston before we were together, he was taking disability. And then I kind of, he was taking a disability check from the social security administration and like working part time. It was ridiculous. So, um, I was just like, no, <laughs> like if you're gonna, if you're gonna like, no, I don't want no scrubs. The scrub is a guy who can't get no love for me. Um, I was like, this is really nice that you're doing this, but maybe get a job that pays you well because you don't like this. It just didn't, I was like, you don't really need this. Like you can still, if you can play video games, you can get a job. But anyway, um, right before we got, so he used to get that anyway, um, years and years and years and years later, I think we've been together for like 12 years now or something ridiculous. Um, he got a bill from the social security administration that was like, Hey, remember all those. And he had a really hard time, um, being like, no, I don't want or need disability now because I've got a job that, you know, like I'm earning more than I, like, I don't need it. Um, so we thought we had settled it 12 years ago. And then a few months ago we got a bill and I had pulled this card right beforehand. Um, so usually that card to me, like that card, I have strong associations for that card with surprise finances. Um, if that makes any sense, uh, either good or bad. Um, but yeah, just, it just seems to me that like, again, like there's not too many worries and you're kind of comfortable, but there's going to be some decision-making coming up in your future as to, um, you know, as to like your, your feeling all right situation and it's probably going to be financial. Um, and that's it. I'd like to hear some feedback because it is a per like, it is more of a predictive reading, um, than something that is immediate. So I'd like to, like, if you get any feedback for me later on, I'd love to hear it. Um, you're disabled. So that's, it could be about, well, I mean, it doesn't say to me so much that it's about disabled. I was just using it as a, for instance, of, of a surprise bill because yeah, I don't think it has, I'm not going to have so much to do with that as that this is more of a comfy in finances and, and a challenge coming up to that. I don't know. Like, that's just kind of what I'm getting. I'm kind of like, I always get like, nope, that's what it means. And then I get stuck and I get stuck in my own thought patterns. But anyway, there is that. And then Leslie, we're going to do a reading for you, my dear. And then I am off because I've got to hit the post office because I think I have a package for mail and a gallo that I got to sign for. What? Um, yeah, so that's, that's exciting. So we'll definitely do, we'll do, um, a video about that later because anything from Il Manigello can't be bad, right? <clears throat> oh, you're too late for what live? No, we've got one more reading, Brenda. Did you want to do like, we're still chit-chatting away. You're not too, too late. Did you need a reading? I would always do it. I would love to do a reading for you if that's what you needed. But let's see. All right. So, and let's see, you want a general? If you want a reading, you're not too late. You can pop in, but that's, you're the, the, you're the last, everybody else listening and watching, you are the last one. So we're going to do Leslie and then one for you, my dear. Leslie, did you want a general reading? Okay. Oh. Sorry, I'm looking at your cards, but I was also like, coffee? Um... So let's see. Um, oh my God, my town is thinking about banning plastic straws, you guys. I can't even, like I am all for being environmental, but 
I draw the line at straws. Okay, so I'm gonna have to like stock up. You drew the page of cups and the four of cups and the knight of swords. And I don't know, this kind of seems to me, um, this seems to me about making like an emotional decision. Um, like, like a, like a, like a rash emotional decision, if that makes any sense, based out of a place of being just bored with the situation that you're in. Um, Gonna... Oh, and you also, I just pulled an extra, like a clarifier for you, a two of swords. Um, not necessarily like a breakup, but some sort of like, you got you got like some sort of like emotional, like bigger emotional turmoil going on. Um, be it like just a, dis just a general dissatisfaction with where you are in life. Um, you've got it like this kind of inkling, like, I'm kind of, it sounds really stupid, but I'm kind of getting like Little Mermaid-ish from this. Like, look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Um, like you just kind of, you just hate where you are right now, but you hate it. You hate it. And you've got like this hopeful, youthful outlook of like, I could go somewhere else and it would be so much better. I could just escape all of this. And it's like, if I just change something, it would be all right, and then I wouldn't be so bored or so melancholy. Um, but then the Knight of Swords is so there are two there are two cards in the tarot deck that kind of I don't know if you guys get the Leroy Jenkins, but seem to me like they 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 um, striking out as far as like rash decision making or concern. There's one of them that ends a little more positively, and that would be the Knight of Wands, um, somebody who's you know rash decision making, but like a little more hopeful about it, like. Like it's good, it turns out a little bit better. It's coming from like a better place, like a place of passion and maybe humor and like, you know, just like a jovial, like, oh my God, let's do this. And then there's a like, I'm gonna fucking do this. Um, like a like a negative version of that. This is almost like a mirror image of the Knight of Wands to, for me. Anyway, kind of like a, like a, I, I'm, like it's supposed to be the it's supposed to be the card about making decisions using your head and your heart and like swift action, but it's almost like a you forgot to think. It's a shoot first, ask questions later kind of a card, um, in very in almost the literal sense of in almost the literal sense of that of the uh, of the of the phrase. Like I I always picture like an old timey shootout with sheriffs and like trying to figure out like okay well what happened and like the guy dies and you're just kind of like well fuck man you should have tried to take him alive <laughs> you know. Um, but I don't think that necessarily, I think you're going like whatever it is that you're looking to change or like the, the, the path that you're trying to take, you're doing it. And like, you haven't really fully thought about it. You haven't really, there's something about this that you haven't really fully thought through. You haven't really, like you just, like, I'm just kind of like, mm -hmm. maybe don't, <laughs> like, like, or at least not yet. Like there's, Something that you really, really want to do and you think is going to change your situation drastically and you just haven't thought it through and not that you shouldn't do it, but um, not that like, not that like, not that you shouldn't, but you really need to think whatever drastic change that it is that you're looking to make, you need to think about it. You need to just be like, nah, like, okay, like I really want to do that and it seems really good. Don't just jump in, um, you know, yeah, weigh both sides of it, like really kind of examine really just kind of examine it before you, whatever decision that it is that you're going to make, like, don't just jump in. Don't just be like, yeah. Um, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't, I, I probably, it probably doesn't make much sense, but apparently we're all about future reading today. So, um, mm. there's also, um, I don't know, like it seems, it seems very, 
these cars seem very watery and flowy and rainy to me today. Um, if that makes any sense. Um, you do animal assisted therapy and have been off all summer because of knee issues and having trouble getting back in the saddle. Um, no, that doesn't, I mean, like, yeah, that's happening to you, but that doesn't feel like this is what this is about. I mean, maybe, maybe this feels like, oh, well, maybe if I change the place where I do therapy, like it'll be better. Or maybe if I, you know, move to a different city, or maybe if I move to a different house, or maybe if I, um, you know, like break up with someone, it'll change. This is more of like a, this is more of like a grasping at straws, like Ariel, like Little Mermaid. Like maybe if I, you know, grow some legs and get the fuck out of Dodge, I'll be happy. Like that's not, like that's not really, um, it's not really realistic, but um, I don't think it has anything to do pertaining to, to that situation. It's got some, it's just doesn't make any sense to me right now, but Again, it might, it might at some point. Anyway, I don't know. I'm, I'm stuck, <clears throat> but that's what I'm getting. And I hope it makes sense to you. Um, or I hope it will make sense to you. Uh, again, feedback is really good. Um, you guys, cause it's been a while since I've read tarot for anybody else but myself. So I would love some feedback on that. All right. So Let's see. We've got one for we've got one for uh, Brenda. Brenda, do you just want a general one? Supportive tarot. Hi, supportive tarot. How are you? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry that it's not. That wasn't like the most amazing reading on the face of the planet, but. General readings tend to be a little unfocused, if that makes sense. Um, and they're one of those, they're one of those readings. I like, I like general tarot readings. Don't get me wrong. They're really good practice and I really need more practice with general. Um, but focused readings seem to get the job done a little bit better. And then uh, general readings make sense. Like they're a hindsight is 2020 20 kind of a thing. Like, a, oh, that's what it meant. Um, all right, so we've got one for Brenda. We'll do general, because clearly I need practice. Uh, general for Brenda. Doo -doo. Lots of swords and cups today, you guys. Holy cannoli. All right, so we've got the Page of Swords. Hi, Paul, how are you? Hi, Susan. Um, we've got the Knight of Cups. And we've got the Emperor. Um, So <laughs> this kind of says, like, I don't know, this feels like, this feels like a, um, vacation all I ever wanted, vacation, something, something, get away. I don't know, for whatever reason, like, the Knight of Cups is just sticking, like, in my head as far as, like, vacation, like, you know, like, it, it's, like, yay, riding a horse on the beach. Like, it's basically, like, it makes me want to go on vacation really, really bad right now. And it's like playing that stupid song from you know, the like the vacation I want to get away. And then also Holiday Road from Family Vacation. And it's making me miss Chevy Chase. But anyway. Um, and the Page of Swords. This says to me that you're having kind of like, maybe you're having like a difficult kind of a, you're having a little bit of a difficult, hey, Cosmic, how are you? 
you're having a bit of a difficult time getting back into a working headspace after your time off. Um, like the page of swords just is like, you know, this is, this is like the getting out, like, you know, like the, the, it just seems like a, like a fresh face, like an intern businessy person. It's just like, you're having, like, you're just, it's like ideas and mind and whatnot. And, um, you're just having like a bit of a, and for whatever reason, the Knight of Cups is just dominating this whole reading for me, even though the emperor is here and he usually like, you know, usually the emperor seems like the, the emperor is always the card that kind of overpowers a reading for me. It's always just kind of like emperor's here, large and in charge. But that horse is just like, <laughs> like, just like this whole thing is just making me want to be like, it's, it's giving me like spring fever, if that makes any sense. Like a, like a, I can't, like, I just can't, like, it's giving me ants in the pants. Um, yeah, just this says to me that you're having like, a really hard time getting back into the swing of things. As far as like being at work and being back in the office is concerned, you're having a really hard time uh, getting back into the routine. Um, even though you've got, um, you've got some big things coming up in the horizon. Uh, for you as far as business and office and stuff are concerned. And you should probably start to get more in that emperor organized, like large and in charge head space. Like you definitely need to get focused. Um, the thing that I think is interesting as far as these two cards are concerned, um, this crow is having a really hard time flying. Like he's trying to carry the sword. Like He's having a really hard, unwieldy time. Like he's just having a really hard time doing it. Like he's just, nope, like, oh my God, like this is the thing that I have to do. And this crow, like he's landed, the the sword is like flat across. He's like standing on it, he's dominated it. Um, so you, get, you just gotta get, like you gotta, you gotta stop being, like, it just feels to me like you're, instead of limping along on a flat tire of ideas and, um, you know, just again, like you just an organization and whatnot, like you just have to, you have to just school it. You have to kind of buckle down and just be in charge of like, ugh. words are failing me this morning. Um, they fail me all the time though. I feel like you just kind of have to, you just got to strap in, buckle down and, and put on your big girl working pants and just kind of like, nope, time to focus, time to focus, even though you're having a really hard time doing it. Um, that, so that's just kind of what I'm getting here from this. It just, like, I can't, like, now that song is stuck in my head. Um, <laughs> damn it, Brenda, your good time vacation vibes of, like, it's just this, this whole, this card is just really dominating. Like, it's just, it's chaos. There's fish falling from the sky. There's a horse, the horse's wings on him. Like, I kind of, like, I half expect the old spice guy to show up in this card, like the... Da, 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 da. Like just it's just it seems like really silly to me. I don't know. Are you having a grumbly day? Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, you jumped into reading, so I mean like no, oh my god, cosmic always interrupt, please. Definitely. Whatever. Interrupt all you want. We love when you interrupt. Um Yeah, because you're so taught, yeah. Um it's just, it's hard to go, it's hard to go from having all that time and whatnot to being like, nope, back in the office. Um, but yeah, you got to buckle down. Um, anyway, that is, I think that is it for, for readings for Crow Tarot um, for today. But anyway, let's see, what can we do? So we'll pull a final, we will pull a final card, I think. Um, but I don't want to use Crotero for that. You know what I will use for that? Here is a preview, sneak preview of a deck that I do need to review as well. Mysteries of Love Oracle deck. A really well-run Kickstarter, actually. Like, I feel like they kind of already had the printing. Um, they, they had everything ready to go to print as far as that was concerned. And then, um, And then like just everybody got that. It's a beautiful deck, by the way. Like the the matte gold edging. The cards are a little big, but it's it's a really cute little deck. But we'll pull our card for our day from this little guy. From this little guy. It shuffles pretty decently though for a really large deck, but you kind of have to have man hands to do it. 
Damn my man hands. So where is our energetic card for the day? Silly deck. True voice. Excellent. So we've got a little uh, Herman Melville sperm whale action going on. Um, I did back arcane bullshit. Oh my God. Of course I backed a cosmic creeper. So I've got the, um, I've got their, um, okay. What is it? Game crafter. I've got their game crafter and the game crafter expansion for arcane bullshit. So when I found out that they were going to be doing a better, like a, just a better deck, I was just like, yes. So of course I backed the shit out of that. Um, I love that deck so much. It's so stupid and silly. Um, but anyway, um, if you don't, anybody who doesn't have it, like you need to get the arcane bullshit deck. It's amazing. Um, but anyway, this is true voice. Um, finding a way like, yeah, so true with like, it's very throat chakra y cause you've got like the, the, the blue and whatnot, but, um, the sperm, sperm whales communicate over long distances. Uh, da, 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 da. oops, sorry. I'm actually just trying to pull up the guidebook so we can do a little sneak peek about the guidebook as well. Uh, true voice is 102. And it's just supposed to be whale in general. I'm actually really surprised to see a sperm whale show up for just a just regular old whale. Normally you see like a humpback whale or something. Um, da, 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 da. Let's see, 102, true voice. It says, understanding your ancestry to transform your soul. Uh, singing your true song from a place of compassion and getting in touch with the mystery and unseen realms of life. Um, meh. um I, I guess like it, so this is another this is one of those decks that kind of has it's not super sing songy as far as the language is concerned. Um, but Finding a true, like this, this to me is speaking today more about um, figuring out a way to communicate well your wants and needs um, over a distance. And if this makes sense through time and space. Um, and I think that means like, you know, talking a little bit to future you and setting future you up for success instead of being like, like if you're gonna, if you're gonna be like, okay, this is what I want. And this is like, so communicating is really important for you to like kind of manifest and get your place, get yourself to a place of like, okay, this is what I want for me. And then this is how I'm going to get there. Um, <clears throat> and if you can't, uh, the Marigold Tarot, yes, that was, that was a good Kickstarter too. Um, I have that, that's another deck I have to review. It's sitting in a box behind me. Um, but yeah, being able to kind of really put into um, to put into words and to put into complete thought forms the things that you want in your life, especially um, especially you have to, if you're communicating with other people, um, you know that it's really important. So it's just organize your thoughts, figure out a way to say things that you really mean, and say things that are going to benefit you and other people in the long run. Um, the clearer you are, the better it is for everyone, including yourself. So I think that's more about, that's, that's a little bit more that what that's about. And I mean, like you can do the honoring your ancestors and all that kind of stuff if you want. But, um, I think it's more about, you know, just be really clear about what you want and be clear with other people about your thoughts and feelings and whatnot. None of this, None of this couchy, I don't want to hurt, you know, like coddly, I don't want to hurt feelings. I don't want to do like the, like, I don't want, like, this is what you want. This is what you need. Okay, great. It doesn't, people aren't mind readers, damn it. <laughs> it's kind of what that card makes me want to yell out. So like, say what you mean and mean what you say. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's kind of where, what I'm getting for today. But anywho, uh, that concludes today's today's review, I guess. Um, so yeah, if you have, if you want the Crotero, I would wait for the U S games release. Um, there's nothing particular. So in conclusion, yeah, wait for the, wait for the U S games release for the Crotero. If that's something that you really wanted, um, you're going to be getting the same exact deck, better book, better card stock, better box. Um, probably, probably the same or better price. Um, Sorry, sorry.
to the creator. Um, but that's that's my advice to people who are looking to get that deck. Um, but if you want to back her, if you want to back her current dog tarot, which is supposed to be by Bella, um, which is supposed to be uh, coming out, it's supposed to just be indie. But I, again, I'm taking that with a grain of salt because we all know what happens with that. Um, go ahead and do that, I guess. But um, yeah, so that is that is my current thoughts and feelings on that. Uh, I'm going to get going, you guys, because I got to go. Yours been shipped out. Um, yeah, so the, oh, Brenda, bye. Uh, yep, it's time, it's time to get, some time to get bouncing. All right, I'm gonna go. Um, I'll see you guys later. And, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking next review is probably gonna be the Considerate Cat Tarot. So hang in for that. And then whatever I get from Il Metagello. All right, I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye.